Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next episode. In this episode, we are talking about player instantiation over the network. So, simply explained how to instantiate a player um, from the server. So, we can do it the easy way. We can basically send a package which say, okay, boy, uh, instantiate a player prefab on the Unity client, and that's it. But, of course, um, it's not done that easy since the server needs to know about every layer um, which is play okay and of course you want to see um, other players as well on your unity client and how the how does the unity client know how many players are online okay so in fact i'm going to show you um, how to create a network player instantiation and everyone can see each other so to start with, we are going um, to code a little bit on the server. Um, and we are going into our client manager. Okay, um, Within our client manager, we already have a list of clients, which are our connected players. And we are going to create a new, well, let's, a, a new method, which we are going to call instantiate player. So we are typing out public static void instantiate instantiate player. And we do need, of course, a parameter of int connection ID. So we know, okay, which player are we want to instantiate. Okay, as next we can, we can say uh, for each item, so variable item in client, um, we can say um, if the player is play, we can make a bool and stuff like that. We don't need that. So first of all, we want to have all online players on the server are getting sent to the person who is new to the game. After that, we send the person who is new to the game, everyone on the server, including himself. So he can see his own person as well. So first of all, I'm hitting a comma for you, so um, you don't forget it. And everyone who is already online server to the new connection. And to do that, we are making a check. So we can say if if item dot key not equals index. And we can send everyone, um, yeah, basically to the client. Next, it will be the connection ID. Okay, then we can say, basically, we need to create another package, which we are going to do right now. So go back to, to um, the data sender. Let's create a new package. So create a public static void send instantiate instantiate layer of course we do need a connection id now first of all we do need an index which of course is the person uh, we want to send and then the receiver which is our connection id okay so therefore we are going to create a byte buffer buffer is equal to new byte buffer as always you're going to create a package, write integer int server packets dot s layer data, which we don't have, but which we will going to create. And then we need to write down, so the client knows which player it is, we need to write down the index of the person of the player data we are going to send. Okay? And after that, we can say client manager dot send data to our connection ID, and we are going to say buffer dot array, and don't forget buffer dot pose. Perfect. Then we are adding simple as that s player data. Okay. Now go back into our client manager and now we can within our for each loop we can now say server uh, 
excuse me, data sender, data sender, dot send instantiate player. Our index is our item dot key. And our connection ID will be, of course, our connection ID. Okay. After we have done that, we can now say send the new connection. Everyone is already online in this game, including himself as well. Then we can just basically say another for each loop, for each item in client. Say data center send instance player, but instead item.key, we are going to say connection ID and then the receiver will be item.key. And that's it. Okay, perfect. Now, after we create a new connection, we are sending him the welcome message, which is perfectly fine. And then we can just say instantiate player directly with our connection ID, which will be our new client dot connection ID. Okay, so the server side is already done. Now we are going back to the client side. Okay, open up the client, open up the client handle data, um, open up a data receiver at the package, so S instantiate player, and then read out the package. So you can say public static void handle instant player byte array data okay now type out everything we already know byte buffer buffer equals new byte buffer buffer dot write bytes data and then we need to read out the int packet id equals buffer dot read integer and then we need to read out the index so int index is to buffer.reinteger and then don't forget to dispose your buffer and now we can do a lot of stuff so we can basically say now onto our network manager network manager dot instance and we are going to create a message which says instantiate player and then putting in our index as well we don't have the method yet, but we are going to create it. But before we are going back into our client handle data, we copy this line with control D and just change the stuff a little bit. So S, instantiate player, and then we say handle instantiate player right there. Okay, now going back to our network manager here. And we are going to create a method which will instantiate our player. We are going to say public void instantiate player. And of course, we do need the index of the player, not the connection ID. We do need the index. Okay. Um, so, but we need to have a list on the client side as well. So we know, okay, which player is actually who. That is no problem. We are going to create simple as that a public dictionary. Um, int the key will be an int, and the value will be a game object, and we call this simple as that player list. Player list equal to new dictionary. Okay, so now we can instantiate the player and add it to a list later on use it as a reference if we want to move in but as well we do need an a prefab so we're going to say public game object player pref okay now we can say player pref no game object go equals instantiate player pref now we can say go dot name equal to player as our index. So we know which player it is. 
And then last but not least, we can basically say layer list dot add index and our go. Awesome. And now we can have a look if that is working. If we don't have any errors right there, we don't. And let's go. Let's start the server. I hope I didn't forget anything. So the server has started. Let's go back to the to the client. Let's check the network manager since we do need a prefab. So let's create one real quick. So we are creating a capsule as a player. We call it, I don't know, player pref. Drag and drop it into the prefabs. So it is a prefab. Go into network manager and drag and drop it into it, overwrite it, apply all. And now let's see what happens if actually the player is getting instantiated. So hit play, and what happened next is basically there is the player. The player is instantiated with his connection ID. On the server side, it is the index. And now basically we can check if we can instantiate multiple people and they can see each other. So let me create a real quick build and run. And let me put it actually YouTube test. Let's wait till it is compiled. And then we can check it. Okay, what is this? Incorrect path for a scene file. What is going on? Okay, uh, build settings. Build a run. Oh, there you go. Okay. So now it is getting built. Server. Oh, close it. So restart the server. Wait till everything is compiled. If. Well, actually, we cannot see on the second slide if the player is instantiated since we instantiate the player at the same position. But since we have the Unity editor, we can drag and drop the player around to see if, if those are getting instantiated. So let's make the resolution a little bit lower, windowed, and then let's go. So Unity client, the player is instantiated. And now what should happen here on the Unity editor is basically... We should see now two players in our hierarchy. Okay, so let's see what happens. Hit play, and there you go. We have two players in our hierarchy, which is this player and this player. Apparently, we can't see them since both are at the same position. But when we drag and drop the scene around, as we can, see, we have two players, and that's how easy you create a player over the network over the server. Yeah, thank you for watching, guys. If you want to, you can leave a like, leave a comment, and join my Discord server for further discussions, help, and support as well. If you like it that much that you want to support me, you can check out um, the Patreon page. Apparently, my homepage is currently under construction. So um, you won't be able to access the database um, to download or buy stuff from my shop since everything is in work. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and see you guys in the next episode where we handle yeah, server-side movement, I would say. See you and bye.